Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I will be reviewing the Big Buck Hunter World Arcade Cabinet from Arcade 1UP. This is the first light gun cabinet from Arcade 1UP. And I will be telling you what I like about the cabinet, what I don't like about the cabinet, what my overall thoughts are, whether or not this product is worth your hard earned cash, and most importantly, is it worthy of the floor space in your game room. So let's get into it. To start with, this is the Big Buck Hunter World Cabinet sold from Walmart, and it's quite confusing because there is also a Big Buck Hunter Pro Cabinet sold from Best Buy. Now that there are a few differences between the two products, but not as many as you would think. Most importantly, they both have the exact same game lineup, with Big Buck Hunter Pro, Big Buck Hunter Pro Open Season, Big Buck Safari, and Big Buck Safari Outback. It's often that these cabinets from different retailers can have different game lineups while retaining the same cabinet name. Here, the cabinet names are different, but the game lineup is the exact same. So what is the difference between the two? Well, other than the name of the cabinet, the art style is the only main difference that I can see. The pro version has just an image of a buck on the side of the cabinet, while World has a buck and a tiger. Also, Pro uses more blues and light brown colors in its design, while World uses more oranges and burnt reds. Pro also appears to come with an 18 by 24 inch tin sign that you can put on your wall as a decoration. I believe this is why Pro has a higher base price of $550, while the base price for World is $500. I went with World because number one, it has a tiger on one side of the cabinet, number two, it has a tiger on the other side of the cabinet. And number three, Walmart often has it on sale for $450. Big Buck Hunter World is a really fine looking cabinet, I do have to say. I absolutely love the side art. The custom riser artwork matches the cabinet and looks fantastic. And for once, they designed the kick plate to match with the riser. The kick plate still has the four games included, but I love the fact that they didn't go with the plain black background like they usually do. This is the first time that I don't feel tempted to purchase a custom graphic to slap on top of the kick plate. The control panel is slanted at an angle, which actually adds to character and appearance of the cabinet. There is a nice multi-coloring design, which is covered by a deck protector. You have your standard on-off switch, the volume control which allows for a wide range and can be seen on screen as you adjust it. There is one 4-inch speaker in the middle of the control panel and it projects the sound of the gameplay very well. And finally, there are two little cubbies to hold your shotguns. The shotguns themselves are 26 and a half inches long and have a cord that stretches out to 78 inches long. They are pump action shotguns and you'll have one green and one orange. The guns themselves are a little too lightweight for my liking, so they don't have the high quality and durable feel that of which you'd expect from an actual arcade game. Don't get me wrong, the guns perform well and do get the job done, I just have some concern about their long term durability. Being that they are for home use, then they should hold up pretty good in most cases. Just as long as Arcade 1UP supplies replacement guns, but knowing Arcade 1UP, even when they do list them on their website, we will more than likely be presented with a notify me button, which is unfortunate. The marquee is taller than most, if not all, Arcade 1UP marquees and is pretty cool in design. It is not a light up marquee, which is a downer considering this is standard for most cabinets now. From what I understand, this is because a light up marquee can create performance problems with the send in light gun technology used on this cabinet. So while unfortunate that it's not a light up marquee, it is definitely understandable as to why. Overall, the appearance of the cabinet is really awesome. It has so much character and will definitely stand out in your game room. So let's move on now to the actual gameplay itself. This was in fact the first cabinet from Arcade 1UP to utilize the send in light gun technology. This allows LCD screens to work with light guns, similar to that of old CRT TV screens. To do so, the screen is required to have a solid white border around it. This is something that when you are just watching someone play, it is quite noticeable and can be distracting. But when you are actually playing yourself, then you are so engaged with the gameplay 
that it really becomes a non-issue. I guess this will vary depending on the person, but once I started playing, it was absolutely not a problem and did not detract from my experience at all. The only issue that I had with the white border was that the cabinet comes with a standard Arcade 1UP 17-inch LCD screen, which is a little small for a light gun game, I admit. And on top of having a screen that is borderline too small, then you have the white border that eats up some of that screen space as well. Now I know a lot of people are staying away from this cabinet based upon the screen size alone. And full disclosure, I'll admit that I'm usually in the minority as I've never really felt the need to upgrade my screen size on any of my other arcade one-up cabinets. I mean sure, I wouldn't mind a bigger screen in most cases, but I'm usually content and don't see the need to spend the money on an upgrade. And that includes my four player cabinets as well as the virtual pinball machine that I had. Now I am doing my first screen upgrade on my modded Pac-Man cabinet, but that is only because I tried to hook up a PS3 to it and fried the VS display board and monitor. And when pricing out a used 17 inch replacement monitor, I figured it just made sense to pay a little more and go for the upgrade. So depending on how that goes will determine if I upgrade a screen on the Big Buck Hunter World cabinet or not. That being said, I do believe that this cabinet would be better served with a larger screen as it's really the first time that I've said to myself, this needs a bigger screen. <laughs> I do think that it's completely playable with the 17 inch screen that it comes with and it doesn't ruin the experience for me personally. However, I really do love this cabinet and it may be worth the investment to increase the screen size to even further enhance my experience with the cabinet. I know many people are holding out in hopes that Arcade 1UP increases the screen size on their next light gun cabinet. Personally, there is nothing that I have seen from the company that leads me to believe that they will do this. And even if they do, then it would increase the price of the cabinet so much to where you would just be better off upgrading it yourself. So do what you want, but I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. The other two things that usually factor into a lot of people buying this cabinet are the space required to play it and the height of the cabinet. I really have no idea what the suggested distance from the cabinet is while playing. I can tell you what I've tried and what I would suggest. I first tried sitting about 5 foot from the cabinet, which would require a total of about 86 inches from the wall to the back of the stool. And this does work pretty well, but with the screen size as is, then it will be a bit challenging. My preferred distance and what I would suggest to optimize your experience would be to sit about 3.5 to 4 foot away from the cabinet, which would require about 6 feet from the wall to the back of your stool. I just found that while sitting at this distance my experience was enhanced, as far as performance and difficulty. Also it made the smaller screen size not near as noticeable. As far as the height of the cabinet, this will obviously differ from person to person. I'm 5'11", and I can play it standing up, although this is definitely not preferred. As you can see, it means that I'm forced to shoot down at an angle. For smaller children or individuals who are maybe 5'5 five five or shorter, then you can probably play standing up just fine. However, while at 5'11", I can still somewhat play it standing up. If you are over 6' tall, then I would say that it's probably unplayable for you while standing up altogether. Now the first thing that I tried was a standard arcade 1UP stool, and this did improve things a little bit, but still was not the preferred height for me. So next I moved down to one of my adjustable arcade 1UP stools that I have set low for use with my cocktail table. Now this I found to be the perfect height for me. As you can see, while sitting on one of these stools, my gun is pretty much parallel with the ground while aiming at the screen. So depending on your height and how you like to play your cabinets, then your approach to this issue would be different. I know a lot of people choose to rise the cabinet because they want to play this standing up. I know Arcade Mod Up sells a 7 inch riser, which could work, but is a bit pricey of an option if you ask me. And I'm sure there are several other options available if this is what you want to do. Being that I already have several shorter stools, and I find it more comfortable playing seated anyways, means that for now I'm pretty content with the current height. So what the heck is Big Buck Hunter World anyways and what is the objective of the game? If you follow this channel then you know that a light gun cabinet is what I've been craving the most for my game room. 
and there are several cabinets that I've been wanting in Big Buck Hunter was nowhere on that list. I really was not familiar with the game as it was just never anything that appealed to me. So when Arcade went up and announced it, I was pretty disappointed to be honest. I did not pre-order it. Then I watched reviews when it released and I was a little intrigued but still was not interested enough to buy it. I figured I would just wait for the next light gun cabinet to be announced. However, just through the conversations with you all through the comments, I started noticing that many of you would tell me how Big Buck Hunter was the surprise hit of your game room. And my intrigue grew with each person that told me this, until I finally broke down and bought it. And boy, was my, my initial impressions of this cabinet way off. So there are four games on this cabinet, but it's really broken up into two sections. The first section contains Big Buck Hunter Pro and Big Buck Hunter Pro Open Season. This includes nine adventures across North America. The second section contains Big Buck Safari and Big Buck Safari Outback. This includes eight adventures across Africa, Australia, and India. The gameplay for the two sections is very similar for the most part. There is one large difference as far as gameplay goes, which we will discuss in a bit. The main difference just in general between the two sections is simply the fact that you will be hunting different animals in different locations. Let's first explain the gameplay that applies to both sections in all games on the cabinet. After selecting between one of the two sections, you then are able to select between one to four players. You can do this turn based where each player gets a turn and then passes on to the next player. Or you can do it competition based where two players each have a gun and are hunting at the same time against each other. You next will choose between one trek adventure, three trek adventure, or bonus only. Now selecting one trek means that you will hunt in five spots at one location and then play a bonus game after hunting all five spots. After completing the one trek adventure, your score is tallied up for that location and then saved. You are then given the option to continue the adventure to a new location, where you will hunt five new spots and have a new bonus game at the end. You can once again stop here or continue to the third and final trek. So the only real difference between one track and three track is that in three track you simply go through all three locations automatically without needing to verify that you want to continue. Both options will save your high score for each specific location and your total score given that you complete all three tracks. The bonus only allows you simply to skip the hunting and just go to the mini games. Regardless, once you've selected between the game mode, you then select what animal you want to hunt you can then proceed to go through the five spots in whichever order you want. Now the purpose of the game is to only kill the male of whatever you are hunting. Each spot will have three males, several females, and several critters. One of three things will end your turn at each spot. The first is killing a female. Killing a female is like a game over. It ends the round and takes you to the next spot. You get whatever points you've accumulated but if the first thing you shot was a female, then tough luck. The second thing that will end the round is killing all three males. And the third is once the third male has left the spot. Now the second and third things won't immediately end the round, as you still will have a few seconds to shoot any critters left on the screen. But yeah, killing that female ends it right away. So after each round or each spot, your score is tallied up based upon how many males you killed, their size, the distance you killed them from, your accuracy, and then you get bonus points for whatever additional critters you killed along the way. As your score is tallied up, you have female models smiling at you, and in some cases, walking across the screen. So let me stop it right here for a second, because these two things are what won me over for this cabinet. First, let's start with the scoring. Now personally, I find myself returning to the cabinets most in my game room that are skill and score based. As much as I love and enjoy playing beat em ups, and I do love them, believe me, when you have unlimited quarters or are on free play, then the challenge and enjoyment is somewhat limited on these home arcade cabinets. It's not that I don't still enjoy them because I do. The issue is that I don't feel that same challenge and desire to keep coming back to them as I do something like Galaga or Burger Time, where I have a high score that damn it, I really have to beat. And that is what makes Big Buck Hunter such a great experience and a great addition to your game room. This is a skill-based game where high score is really a thing. 
and you can always have that challenge of coming back and trying to improve your accuracy or finding bigger game or shooting them from a greater distance or maybe just shooting more critters along the way. And that, my friends, is what makes for a great arcade experience. And on top of the high score effect, which keeps you coming back, then there is the girls. And is it cheap and shallow that I enjoy on a Friday night to have a cold beverage and hang out in my game room and then I have these beautiful women smiling at me and congratulate me on my performance on a video game. Yes indeed, it is shallow and cheap, but do I care? No, not one bit. In fact, my appreciation for the game developers just increases as I think of what a wonderful idea this was, as to really know who they are marketing the game for. And if you are offended by this, then well, they even thought of you as well, as you can turn off the girls in the settings menu. Speaking of the settings menu, you can also adjust the difficulty setting here, and setting it on easy will allow you to shoot without the pump action between each shot. This was suggested to me by several viewers, and I would suggest any newcomers to the game to start here, as I did and it made the game much more enjoyable initially. I've since changed it back to the normal default settings and prefer it here but it's nice to have that option for more casual gamers or children. So I was mentioning earlier that there is one major gameplay difference between the two sections in the game. The difference is that Big Buck Safari games also include trophy game in each location. So the general gameplay for each spot is the same with the male, females, and critters. However, each spot will also have a trophy animal that will run through at the end of the round. This will be something like a tiger, lion, giraffe, hippo, elephant, and so on. These are usually much harder to take down, but they definitely increase the challenge and fun. Also, I might as well add that the Big Buck Safari section has all new girls with much shorter shorts. So enjoy. Now let's touch on the performance of the game. To start with, the send in light gun technology works really good. Seriously, it's far more accurate than I was expecting it to be, as I've never tried it anywhere but on this cabinet. That being said, it's not 100% accurate or perfect. There are times when you'll feel that a shot wasn't exactly where you aimed it at, maybe it didn't register properly, or maybe there was some slight lag. All these things are true. However, none of them occurred enough to where it hampered my experience with the game. Like on games by nature, are just somewhat gimmicky. I mean, I've never played one at home or in the arcades where I felt like it was 100% accurate. So if you have, then I'd love to know which game and where. Graphically, I think all the games look really good. I never played any of these games in the arcade that I can recall, so it's possible that they aren't arcade perfect. As a newcomer, I think everything looks fine, and I have absolutely no issues with any of the games visually. Arcade 1UP uses a fan for the PCB board, similar to their OutRun cabinet and their pinball machines. So you can tell that the games are a bit more demanding technically compared to a lot of their previous cabinets. The only real performance issue that I notice is that the games glitch or get a slight freeze frame from time to time. I have no idea if this was also an issue with the game in the arcade, but I thought I'd mention it nonetheless. And again, it doesn't happen enough to where it's a major problem, but it is at least worth mentioning. So to wrap things up, I think I've already answered what I like and did not like about this cabinet. I guess the biggest question is, do I think this cabinet is worth the price? And is it worth the floor space in your game room? Let me start with the floor space question. The answer to this question is absolutely yes. The cabinet looks great. The gameplay is addicting and fun. The replayability is off the charts on this one. There's really a ton of content here with a great variety of animals, locations, and mini games. You will be busy for a long time. It's a great change of pace cabinet that will offer something that your other cabinets can't. It checks the boxes for just about every scenario as far as fun for parties or company, fun for children, and a challenge for skilled gamers. The bigger question would be, is it worth the price? Well, that will depend. For me, I think the $450 is a great value and a great deal. At $500, then I still like the price and think it's worth it for me. I would not recommend it at $550, but that's just me. There are multiple reasons as to why, 
So let me explain. This product is really not a standalone purchase, meaning that the majority of the people that purchase this cabinet will need to also purchase either an additional riser, a stool, a screen upgrade, or all the above. I think that this cabinet should have come with an adjustable stool at a minimum. minimum. And I'm really curious as to why there is no matching stool that they are selling alongside it. So at the $550 price point, it should have included a stool or an additional riser as I feel like one of those are going to be mandatory for most people. The 17 inch screen does get the job done, but if you know you won't be happy with it, then I would pay no more than $450 for the cabinet knowing you have to factor that upgraded monitor into the total cost. I still think that this cabinet has a whole lot to offer, and I'm sure that I will look into another light gun cabinet down the road. But if I was stuck with one, then this would probably be the one I would choose. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Later.